Is it okay to pivot to change your mind? What if people judge me? What if I look stupid? What if I make the wrong decision? My name is Amoya Shante, and for the past four years, I've been living my dream life. Living out of just three backpacks for the first two years, my three daughters and I have had endless adventures across multiple countries. It was during our second year of traveling that we fell absolutely in love with Married in Mexico, where we've spent the last two years building a beautiful and simple life. That was until two weeks ago, when we moved back to the U.S. after being gone for four years. Hey my loves, welcome to or welcome back to the channel. Our last video was all about us selling all our possessions for the second time and moving back to Austin, Texas after being abroad for four years. Now, this video, this past video, some of y'all were deeply concerned. There were a lot of assumptions. Some of y'all were super angry. But most of you guys were so supportive. So I need to say thank you so much for supporting our journey, for continuing to support our journey, for subscribing, for commenting, for giving me awesome feedback that's kind and supportive. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for that. This video is gonna be about unmasking all those concerns, those assumptions, and really getting down to the real reasons why we left Mexico and why we are now living back in the USA. So make sure you watch the whole video. I've got, you know, more details towards the end, but that's what this video is about. If you would have told me that I'd be leaving Mexico and moving back to the US even two months ago, I would have said you were absolutely nuts. Yet here I am coming to you on YouTube from my little cottage, on the deep east side of Austin, Texas. A lot of you already know my story of getting out of an unhealthy marriage, selling all my possessions, traveling the world full time as a single mom with my three daughters for two years before we fell madly in love with Married in Mexico where we have lived for the past two years until two weeks ago. It has been the most beautiful and life-changing experience. I would not change everything we did, all the adventure, all the ups and downs of the past four years for anything. However, <laughs> so recently we took a six week trip back to the US, which a lot of you guys know about because I did put a couple of videos up on YouTube where basically we were resetting our visas. There's cars going by. Learning how to film in a new place, in a much smaller place, much different everything is gonna be a challenge, but I'm learning. But anyway, so yeah, we, we took the six week trip to the States for the purpose of resetting our tourist cards, because you can only stay in Mexico for six months at a time if you are on a tourist card. And that's if the border agent even gives you six months. They normally will, but sometimes they don't. It's up to them. Um, and we were going to apply for residency for Mexico. So it's even crazier that we are now no longer in Mexico. Almost immediately upon us returning to US, I saw my teens light up. And to be honest, I have not seen them that happy in a very long time, since before the pandemic. So there was a point before the pandemic hit where my teens had a lot of friends in Mexico. They would have sleepovers all the time. I wouldn't even see them for like two, three days at a time because they would be at their friends' houses having sleepovers. They were loving life in Merida. They had a school that they loved going to. When the pandemic hit, everything just stopped, right? And I know that happened all around the world. So it's not like we were some unique case, yada, yada, yada. But what didn't happen all around the world was a seven month super strict lockdown that Merida put in place. And it broke my teens and it broke my four year old too. And I've never seen my four year old ever have breakdowns in the way that she was having during those seven months in Merida. And for my teens, the magic of Merida left and didn't come back. Even when things started opening up again, kids still weren't really allowed places. And it just, you could tell that they just were struggling. And even me, like I, some of the magic of Merida left with that 
pandemic, with the closing, with the, how strict it was, I just felt trapped. I felt trapped in my home. And we really, we, it wasn't just me. Like I think across the board, everyone felt trapped from the beaches being closed that entire time, curfews, there were limits on Uber, where at one point only one other person can be in the car. Well, I've got a family of four. Then it was, oh, two people. So I couldn't, even if there was somewhere for me to take my kids, I couldn't take them anywhere. There were checkpoints if you were trying to leave the city. It was, it was a different experience and it was so long. It wasn't like we do this for a month or two months or three months. I'm talking seven months, y'all. Seven months on house arrest is basically how I can explain it. And it it just ugh, it killed my teens right so we went on the trip to the u.s and i just saw them light up and at first we were in florida we were family then we came back to austin and austin was a place that i'd always loved but it's also a place when the last time we were here where i experienced we experienced so much trauma and so much heartache Austin started to symbolize a lot of that trauma and that heartache for us. But when we came back this time, we were able to rewrite some of those stories and do some of the things we did in the past and make new positive memories. And I just, I think I was sitting in my room one day and just thinking like, what would life be like to be back here? What would that look like for my girls? And I know one in particular, one of my girls has really wanted to try out traditional high school in Austin. She's not interested in living anywhere else. And she's probably been feeling like this for quite some time. With the pandemic, it's been, it's been more, more of that feeling, right? And how I saw it in that moment was they gave me four years of endless adventures, four years of travel and living abroad. I can sacrifice and I can give back to them and stick around for the last few, few years that they have before they reach adulthood, right? They only have a couple years. My oldest is 16, my middle is about to be 15. So um, yeah, I just approached them. I'm like, what do you think about moving back here? And the level of excitement for them was indescribable. And I knew then that I didn't know how I was gonna make it work, but I knew I had to make it work. And originally, originally, I was thinking we would go back to Mexico for six months, get money together, get everything together before we move back here. We would move back here in the summer, they would start the new uh, school year. But that's not what happened. You guys saw what happened. I went back to Mexico, we were there for less than two weeks before we just decided to just get rid of everything and um hop back on a plane and there were so many crazy complications so i should probably talk about that too but first i should also say that while we were here in austin i knew that i needed to put some anchors in place to make sure my butt returned because as much as i love my kids the thought of giving up my life in Marietta was not easy for me in the least bit like not at all not a little it wasn't easy um whew. Uh, there's some adjusting happening, right? So I knew we had to find a place that, you know, I could rent before we stepped on that plane to go back to Mexico. So I was like, if I don't have something here that's saying you have to come back, then I don't know if I'm gonna come back. <laughs> and luckily we were able to find this little cottage and I'm gonna tell you more about and later in the video about like how this channel is going to be moving what is the significance of getting a little cottage with a lot of land here in the east side of austin like all that good stuff so stay tuned to the end to hear about that where the channel's going what direction are we going what, what can you expect to see but yeah we secured a place a day and a half I signed a lease before getting back on the plane to Mexico. We got back to Mexico. I felt so relieved. Like as soon as I got off the plane, I'm riding through the streets in the Uber. I just felt so good being back because I was suffering from a lot of anxiety when I was back in the States. I was reliving stories basically, right? I was reliving stories. I was going head to head with my own self. Like, what are you thinking? Why are you doing this? Why? Like I was having an internal battle with myself. I was feeling a bit resentful. I was just feeling all the feels about giving up a life, a beautiful life that I had created. And it was only when I was back in Mexico, we were there for a week, when I made the decision that I don't care where I'm at in the world. I preach on this every day, yet I'm here not walking in the steps that I preach. 
and that is that it doesn't matter where I'm at. I'm going to create a beautiful life that I absolutely love no matter where I'm at in the world. So if I'm going to be crying about having to move back to the U.S., like, come on, what's the privilege in that for one, right? Crying about moving back to the U.S., thinking it's going to be the worst experience ever, the worst decision I've ever made, thinking that the travel back to the U.S. is going to be crazy because we have this do we have our dog and she is a massive dog and almost all airlines are no longer letting pets fly cargo because of COVID. Too many flight cancellations, all this stuff. So it took me like six weeks to even figure out how we were gonna get her back. And that's the whole video on how you can get your pets to the Mexico and back to this, all this stuff, cause it is wild. But I just started doing my number one tool that I do to manifest anything I want, whether that's a move back to the States, whether that's a smooth travel day. I started scripting. I started scripting and writing it as if it had already happened. And I wrote that my life in Austin would be beautiful, that our house was gorgeous, that we had great friends and great community and all these things. And I wrote that our travel day would just be seamless and that you know, our dog would be underweight and she'd be able to make the flight and all this other kind of stuff. Like I just started allowing myself to envision a beautiful life back in the States, allow myself to envision the feeling of love, the feeling of, of joy, of, of gratitude and all these things. And that's what kind of flipped the script on us moving back. I knew that if I was thinking negative, this is gonna be bad, like how I was, then that is exactly what I was gonna create when I moved back to Austin, Texas. So I had to flip it, I had to flip it. And that's what I did. And I'll tell you what, I haven't created a video, y'all. This is the first one, it's been a few weeks because I have just been home. I've been in our little cottage. I didn't even, oh my gosh, like we left with it. We're starting over, I don't know, I'm rambling. We are starting over from scratch. We have nothing, we had nothing. We left this cottage, it was empty. It had this super ugly like alligator print carpet. I'm not even joking y'all, alligator print carpet. The owner was so excited about this brand new alligator print carpet he put in the cottage. And I was thinking how, I can't even get enough rugs to cover it. Left the key with a friend of mine while we were away in case anything happened. Cause we didn't know how long we were gonna be gone for. We did not know. So um, if, oh, it's just a lot, it's a lot. So anyways, we get back here, get the key from my friend, walk inside our house, and I, y'all, she, 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 mm. if you don't have friends like this, go find you some friends like this. She basically furnished almost completely our entire house, including putting in brand new carpeting over that ugly alligator print carpeting, this fluffy, cute, brand new carpeting throughout the house, furnished it, toys for Novella. I mean, like, <sighs> whew. I have the absolute best people in my life from my clients to my friends, to fam, to everything. I just have a next level amount of love in my life. And the level of gratitude I had when I walked into my home that day, I can't even express. But I have just been home the last couple weeks. We really haven't done much. We've been in the house just kind of hunkered down, feeling cozy, trying to stay warm, trying to just be, right? And really envision what this place is gonna be like. I, you know, I envision, like I said, I was gonna tell you, I can now lead into where this channel is gonna be going. So I've always had this dream of homesteading in the city. And we chose a house in the deep east because it looks like we're almost in the forest. We've got like a massive yard front and back. We have all forest in front of us, but we're in the city. And I was renting, so I knew I had to have an owner that was super flexible with me and my visions of, you know, I want backyard chickens, I want a big garden, I want all these different things. These cars are driving by and I'm like, oh, what do they want? You know, I envision soap making, candle making, um, canning, all these different things, and a community garden for the community. Almost this um, I don't want to say open door thing because of my work and being on YouTube, that might not be the best idea, kind of giving up my location, even though I've been very open and transparent in the past. I do have to be a little bit more private in the U.S. because um, some of y'all, um, 
I mean, I appreciate the love, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Just gotta be careful, right? I'm trying to be smart about things. But um, you can expect travel. That's not over. The world is weird right now. There's no doubt about it when it comes to travel. It gets challenging. There's There are unique challenges. Um, there are mamas in my inner circle. You guys know I have an inner circle members club that um, like three of them have moved to Mexico in the past week, which is beautiful. But travel has its unique challenges. But part of the deal with my teens with moving back to the US is that we spend summers abroad and we spend every break in school, traveling you know there's gonna be a lot of u.s travel i'm still dreaming of a summer in paris y'all oh i've been scripting it i've been scripting i've been scripting it it's got to come together right um so yeah and and i could still have my little urban farm my little urban homestead because of things like um trusted house sitters that's what i used when i went on the six week trip people love to come stay in your house for free and take care of your pets and everything else you have so that is what you can see. You're going to see personal development. I'm going to be talking about lifestyle design. I'm going to be talking about homesteading in the city. I'm going to be talking about travel and living abroad. It, I mean, it doesn't change that much. I've always just documented my life and I'm going to continue documenting my life for you guys and showing you that it doesn't matter where you're at. You can absolutely create a life that lights your soul on fire, regardless of whether you're in the US or you're here or you're that. And for those that like, there were people saying, oh, you know, it must be custody. She's she's running away. She's burning bridges. Like, you're not, Mexico's not over for me. And all that was just way off. I was like, whoa, where's this coming from? I mean, they're like, how did you go from loving Mexico? I don't not love Mexico. I love Mexico. I highly recommend you go to Mexico. They are the most beautiful people, beautiful country, all this kind of stuff, right? Like that has not changed for me. I am not a Mexico hater now or anything like that. I love Mexico. I actually have braces, like you guys know. My daughter and I, we started our braces in Mexico and it is actually very hard to find someone to do your braces in the States when you got them from somebody else. So we probably will have to be in Mexico every two months still. So y'all will still see Mexico content now. When we were leaving Mexico, we stayed in Mexico City for a few days because we had to break up the trip because of our dog. Long story, I know this video is already long, but but um, we kind of fell in love with Mexico City, y'all. <laughs> so when we go back to Mexico for our braces, um, we might actually, instead of going to Merida, I know like all our friends are there, we love them so much, but it is a direct flight from Austin, not Austin, San Antonio to um, Mexico City and my daughter and I, we just wanna spend more time there. So y'all might actually start seeing a lot of Mexico City content. So once again, thank you for your support, for following our journey, for your continued support. As you see this channel shift a little, I mean, a little bit, but um, it's still us, it's still our journey. It hasn't ended, it will not end, and Y'all, please go check out our Instagram because that is where I update a lot more regularly than this channel. I'm gonna try and be better about putting out videos. I know people are like, every Tuesday, like, y'all, I'm just trying to survive sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I'm not thriving, right? Like, and I do not get on camera unless I am feeling it, I'm feeling up for it, I cannot force, I can't be fake, all that good stuff. So yeah, make sure you check out the Instagram so that you can be updated on a more regular basis. They already knew about half of this stuff, right? And um, make sure you comment, like, and if you haven't subscribed, oh my goodness, please subscribe. Until next time, y'all. Bye, everyone.